I'd like to welcome you all this morning to the Usher Hall in Edinburgh uh, on this special day. Uh, enjoy this day. Crossing the stage is something really special. Take your time and enjoy it. Four centuries ago, John Napier, from whom this university proudly takes its name, invented logarithms, one of the greatest contributions to the advancement of knowledge. It was a great step which underpinned Kepler's work on the orbit of the planet and Newton's theory of gravity. Today, you Edinburgh Napier's newest graduates take your own step. History records the support and encouragement to work and study that John Napier received through his faith, from his family and friends, and from those who read his work. We share today's joy with those who have helped us reach this step. And so I invite you to begin today's ceremony with a moment's reflection and to give thanks for the support we have received and the strength we have been given by others. I now declare our graduation ceremony open. Good morning, Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, members of court and academic board, guests, graduands, family and friends. I'm truly honoured to deliver this vote of thanks today. Six years ago, when starting my journey at Edinburgh Napier University, I could have never have imagined that I would be asked to deliver this speech today as your student president. Graduands, today is your day, so embrace it, celebrate it, and remember it. This day marks a peak in your educational achievements, but I know it will not come close to the level of success you will go on to achieve in your lifetime. Everyone in this room has come to this point through a variety of different routes, but we all share one thing which is core to our success, Edinburgh Napier University. As someone who has studied alongside a number of you, I understand the hard work and determination you have all shown to get to where you are today. Congratulations to all of you, we made it. For some of you, today marks the end of your Edinburgh Napier experience, and soon you will walk across this stage to a future you've been building and working towards. It's a day of celebration and the start of things to come, but also, I hope, a realization that something important is ending. Many of you will leave here today and your paths as graduates will never cross again. So before you rush off, at the end of the ceremony, take a minute to say your goodbyes and thank yous and to wish each other well. Today is a celebration of you and your success. It's a time to say thank you to those who have all helped you succeed and supported you at every stage in your university career. Your friends and family, let's give them all a round of applause. And of course, they are the academic staff who work tirelessly to help you reach your goals and earn your place here today. Let's show some appreciation for your lecturers, module leaders, and program leaders. And we can't overlook the support staff, the librarians and IT staff, school offices, careers and employability teams, the cleaners, the porters, the catering staff, and of course, the people in your students' association who will all work tirelessly to give you the best student experience possible. Let's hear it for the support staff. I would also like to thank the senior management team, the deans, the directors, the university leadership team, and our principal for all their work that goes on behind the scenes to support your learning. Graduands, today marks the beginning of a journey. There are no limits to what you can achieve from here, but your time is precious. So don't spend it living someone else's life, don't be trapped by others' thoughts, and don't let their noise drown yours out. I wish you all the very best. Congratulations, all of you. Thank you.
Chancellor, it's my privilege to present Alan Little for the honorary degree of Doctor of Arts. Alan was born in Wigtonshire, Dumfries and Galloway in 1959, where he attended Stranraer Academy. He then studied politics and modern history at Edinburgh University. In 1982, during his final year, he was involved in a BBC political programme about Roy Jenkins' Hillhead by-election victory. During, during filming, Alan, who by his own admission was very shy, didn't speak, finding his voice only when the camera stopped rolling. Hearing his contribution, the shoot was set up once more with his comments making the final programme. The producer rem remembered this, so in 1983, offered him a job at BBC Scotland straight out of university, working as a news and current affairs researcher for 60 minutes. In 1985, he transferred to Radio Solent, starting off as a reporter, then a producer, and after 18 months, he was promoted to news editor. In 1988, he was offered a three-month attachment as a reporter to the BBC Radio 4 news programme today. Everyone thought he'd be back in Solent by the end of the year, but as we know, he never looked back. He joined today just as there was an explosion of foreign news with the collapse of communism in Europe dominating the agenda. His first big assignment was to Czechoslovakia, as it was known then, and from there he moved to Romania where he covered the Romanian Revolution and the fall of Ceausescu. Then came a posting to Amman where he was in the right place to secure a much sought after visa to Iraq. As a junior radio reporter, he may have been expected to cede this to John Simpson, but Phoning the London newsroom, he told them in no uncertain terms that the visa was his. Iraq was his breakthrough moment, reporting from Baghdad during the 1991 Gulf, Gulf War and from Kuwait thereafter, covering the Shia rebellion and brutal attempt by the Republican Guard to suppress the revolution. After the war, and still feeling like a novice, he returned to London, ready to rejoin the reporting shift pool. But by the time he got back, there was trouble brewing in Europe again, so in 1991, he traveled to Croatia, where he stayed for four years reporting on the breakup of Yugoslavia. It was a brutal and difficult assignment, what's known as a hardship posting, covering the siege of Sarajevo and Srebrenica massacre. It was here that Alan first began to present on television and wrote his acclaimed book, The Death of Yugoslavia. In 1995, he moved from the former Yugoslavia to Johannesburg to take up the role as the BBC's South Africa correspondent. The three years he spent there covered the period of Nelson Mandela's presidency. He reported on the aftermath of the Rwandan genocide and the overthrow of Zaire's President Mobutu. There followed postings to Moscow during Boris Yeltsin's presidency and later a four-year attachment to Paris. In 2001, in recognition for his work, he was made a special correspondent. And over the next decade, he's presented on the Today programme and moved on to longer form documentaries, making programmes from Panorama, amongst others. In 2013, he asked to return to Scotland to cover the run-up of the Scottish independence referendum. And the next year, having spent 32 years at the BBC, he left the organisation. Since then, he has continued to work freelance for the BBC and was appointed to the position of chair of the Edinburgh International Book Festival in 2015. When Alan was 18, instead of traveling to Greece for Sun and Satsiki like his peers, he and a friend took the train instead to Sarajevo. He wanted to stand in the spot where the First World War had begun. And this drive to see and smell and be where the action is has stayed with him and helped shape his journalism. His friend and colleague, Alan Clements, says that Little's skill is to allow himself to feel the pain of the people he reports on without ever losing his objectivity. Alan himself says that it's respect for the people whose story he is telling and a wish to ensure that their story is heard that has been his driving focus. In his time at the BBC, Alan has worked in over 80 countries. He's covered wars, revolutions, natural disasters and referenda. As you would expect, his work has garnered him numerous awards, including a gold Sony Radio Award for Reporter of the Year in 1992 and in the same year, Amnesty International Reporter of the Year. In 1994, he won the Calvados Radio War Correspondent of the Year, followed by the Grierson Premier TV Documentary War Award in 2001, and the Charles Wheeler Award for Outstanding Contribution to Broadcast Journalism. Alan has been married to the broadcaster Sheena MacDonald since 2006. Chancellor, 
In recognition of his contribution to broadcasting, I invite you to confer on Alan Little the honorary degree of Doctor of Arts. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, most importantly, graduates, uh, thank you very much for this extraordinary honor. Um, it's pretty humbling to stand here, not least because a uh, reporter's stock in trade is the lives of others. In my trade, you seek out other people's stories, their achievements, their dreams, their joys, their sorrows, their fortunes, and often their extreme misfortune. You don't seek the limelight for yourself. Your job is to be the conduit through which others can make their voices heard in the world. I have a good friend who spent, as a young man, seven months in a concentration camp in Bosnia as a prisoner. Some of his old schoolmates were among the guards. He witnessed their cruelty. He saw men beaten to death or taken away and never seen again. Each morning he woke he didn't know whether he would live to see the night come down. But what he remembers now is the despair that he and his fellow inmates felt when they thought the outside world knew nothing about them. It was, he said, as though we didn't exist, as though we'd been wiped from the face of the world. That changed when the International Committee of the Red Cross were allowed to send inspectors to the camps. They were granted access after public opinion in the Western democracies was moved by news reports that there were, again, in Europe, concentration camps. He told me that after the Red Cross came, our conditions didn't change at all. We still had no food. We were still in overcrowded conditions. People among us were still being killed. But we knew that the outside world knew about us. Our names had been written down in a ledger. Our story was out there. We existed again. We were human again. I remember those words when at times my work has made me feel that I'm predatory, that I'm preying on people whose lives have been turned upside down by unimaginable sorrow or trauma. For the most part, I've found that people really do want to tell me their story. I'm sometimes asked, as Diane said, what quality you most need to be a foreign correspondent or a war reporter, and I think it is respect. Respect for those whose lives you're exposing to the world. In talking to you, they have drawn you into a covenant. They're trusting you to honor them, to honor your side of the deal, trusting you to give a fair account of them and do your best for them. It is a huge privilege. I'm old enough now to have lived through and witnessed and tried to make sense of many events in the uncertain, chaotic, and sometimes dangerous Republic of News. Many of those events have slipped at last into the much more orderly kingdom of history, where it's easier with hindsight to see them with clarity. Much of my working life now lies in the past. What's thrilling about standing here today as a guest of this remarkable university that does so much to nurture talent and uphold standards in the trade that I've spent my working life in and in many other fields, is this, that I can stand here and look into your faces and see not the past, but the thrilling, limitless, open horizons of the future and all that it holds. Good luck to you. Chancellor, it is my privilege to present Mark Naismith for the honorary degree of Doctor of Engineering. Mark is a chartered engineer. He graduated in 1994 from Edinburgh Napier University with a Bachelor of Engineering first class honors in civil and transport engineering. 
He is now a statutory director of several UK subsidiary companies forming part of WSP Global, a Canadian listed corporation and one of the world's leading professional services firms. Mark started his career as a structural engineer before moving into highways and transportation planning. In recent years, he has overseen the planning and design of several iconic UK projects, such as the Athletes' Village for the Glasgow Commonwealth Games, the Shard and London Bridge Quarter, London Crossrail, which included rail systems, design, and several underground stations, the resurfacing of Buckingham Palace, a 10-year refit, and High Speed 2 Rail, HS2, which involves multidisciplinary engineering, environmental planning, and design. Mark's contribution to Edinburgh Napier University is equally impressive in the sense that he has been a long-standing member of the Industrial Liaison Committee in the School of Engineering and the Built Environment, sponsored students in the school, employed a number of Edinburgh Napier graduates, and been a member of the university's campaign board, helping to generate income supporting the growth of Edinburgh Napier. Mark presently holds the position of Chief Executive Officer for WSP in the UK, Israel, and in South Africa, and is a member of the global leadership team. He's a firm believer in the potential that collaborations between university and industry have to close the skills gap in engineering and develop the talent that professionals in the built and natural environment need to future-proof our infrastructure. Under Mark's leadership, WSP established itself as one of the first companies to use the apprenticeship scheme as a platform to address the skills gap and help deliver on the UK's national infrastructure plan. Based on the success of this scheme, Mark now also holds a board position at the Association for Consulting and Engineering, where he oversees its business academy and bestows the virtues of the apprenticeship scheme onto the next generation of professionals. Chancellor, in recognition of his contribution to large-scale infrastructure projects across the UK and his efforts to develop the talents of tomorrow, I invite you to confer on Mark Naismith the honorary degree of engineering. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you to the Academic Board and the Court of Edinburgh Napier University um, for awarding me this honorary degree. It's my great pleasure to receive this recognition, and as a Napier former student, I'm truly honoured to accept this doctorate. I'd also like to thank the Chancellor and the Principal for inviting me and my family here today, um, which is very fitting in a couple of ways. Firstly, for me to receive this award, but also um, my daughter, Laura, who um, is planning her career, her university career, and will be applying to Napier um, for next year. So, <laughs> passing down the generation. As a graduate of the university, I have a long affiliation and relationship with Napier, going back some 33 years, which starts to make me feel slightly old, but I'm proud still to be associated with the institution. I first came to study a higher national diploma in civil engineer back in 1985, when still a college. I then returned in 1991 when a polytechnic to study for an honours degree in civil and transportation engineering, and then graduated in 1994 um, actually on this very stage, so again, very fitting to be here today. And I've really enjoyed watching the evolution of the university over that period. 
It was, however, through encouragement by colleagues at work and support from my parents that I continued to persevere um, with my studies, which stood me in good stead, um, which has led to a fantastic career in civil engineering um, consultancy. And this has led to me being involved in a number of iconic projects, both in the UK um, and overseas. So I can't thank Edinburgh Napier enough for the enjoyable years that I spent studying here and the fantastic background and practical experience that I gained. As I mentioned, I've had first-hand and good insight to the growth and development of this fantastic um, institution and the significant contributions that Edinburgh Napier graduates have made to local and international communities, many of whom have gone on to pursue um, fantastic careers in high-profile locations, um, both in, in companies and, and in countries across the world. One great attribute, though, I would say that Napier has always prided itself on is for students to be workplace uh, ready. And I can certainly vouch for that in um, just having celebrated my 30th year with WSP. I've risen from the rank of graduate, like many of you here today, to now the Chief Executive Officer for the UK, South Africa and Israel, with responsibility for over 9,000 employees. And at WSP, I can tell you that we are a much stronger and more dynamic um, organization because of the high caliber of graduates that have joined us over the years, many of whom have joined us from Napier. Napier's academic program provides a highly relevant and practical education to those who are seeking to better themselves. And as I look at all of you graduates here today, I know the sacrifices, the hard work, the long hours that you have put in to reach this pinnacle but I also know how much fun you've had along the way. But I can assure you of one thing, it has been worth it. And the world is now your oyster with numerous opportunities to progress your careers. The work that you have done has provided you with a fantastic foundation. However, dare say, it, your learning is only just about to begin. And so think of today as a springboard, which will then hope open doors to the rest of your careers. So I'm honoured to share this stage with all of you today and I truly appreciate the University for conferring uh, this honorary doctorate upon me and I'll forever wear it with pride. Thank you very much. Chancellor, I'm pleased to present students from the School of Applied Sciences for the following awards. We will commence with those graduating with our highest awards. The Director of Studies accompanies the student and will undertake the doctoral hooding. For the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a program of work entitled Exploring the Cause of Red Vent Syndrome in Wild Atlantic Salmon from Coastal Waters Around Scotland, Alexander James Kent. Chancellor, I'm pleased to present students for the following awards. For the award of Master of Science Applied Criminology and Forensic Psychology, Callie Stevie Evans. <laughs> Zoe Harriet Campbell. <laughs> Linda Elisabetta Cora. <laughs> Emma Jane Davey. Lana Ferguson. <laughs> Stephanie Catherine Finlay. <laughs> Hannah Forbes. <laughs> Barry Michael Horgan. <laughs> Lucinda Alexandra Rose Kennedy. <laughs> Emma Laurie. 
Sophie Margaret Lockie. Eva Calesta Josephine Manen. Charlotte Jane Nicholson. Kerry O'Donnell. Kemi Morgan Ritchie. Jenna Blish Sharain Sturis. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Biological Sciences, Zain Irshad. For the award of Bachelor of Science Biological Sciences, Musa Al Anezi. For the award of Master of Science Biomedical Science, winner of the University Medal, Patricia Ann Concanon. Sean Charles Allen. Kirsty Ann Craig. Miriam Paravin Ramazan. Marilena Spano. Zoe Stefanopoulou. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Biomedical Science, Colin Francis McGurk. For the award of Bachelor of Science Biomedical Science, Melembe Maria Skula Kitawanga. For the award of Master of Science Biotechnology for Environmental Sustainability, Gary Nathan Campbell. For the award of Bachelor of Arts, Business and Enterprise in Sport, winner of the University Medal, Greg Allen James Drummond. For the award of Master of Science, Clinical Exercise Science, winner of the University Medal, Maria McLaughlin. Rachel Elizabeth Connolly. Michael Gordon McBride. For the award of Bachelor of Arts Criminology, Anna Morag Buxton. For the award of Master of Science, Drug Design and Biomedical Science, winner of the University Medal, Angus James Bancroft. Winner of the University Medal, Michael Brown. Winner of the University Medal, Ada Perez Palacios. <laughs> Lewis Bryce McVeigh. Adam Douglas Ford. Luca Marasa. Victoria Necheva. Isatu Sheriff. For the award of postgraduate diploma, Drug Design and Biomedical Science, Ainsley Perman. For the award of Master of Science, Ecotourism, Nina Breck. For the award of Bachelor of Science, Forensic Biology, Claire Cooney. For the award of Master of Science, Medical Biotechnology, Brian Masunza. <laughs> For the award of Master of Science, Pharmaceutical Science, winner of the University Medal, Maria Schwartz. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Psychology, Sunia Nasser Alameya. For the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours Social Science, Julieta Choromonanska. <laughs> Claudia Casillion. <laughs> Lauren McCarvey. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Arts Social Sciences, Rebecca Catherine Chalice. 
for the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours, Sports and Exercise Science, Helen Panesh Muzabi. <laughs> Ivo Carlos Vieira Anandredi. <laughs> Robert Stewart Gordon McKenigie. <laughs> Ellie Louise Wilson. Eamon Crook. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Science, Sports and Exercise Science, winner of the University Medal, James Shedden. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours, Sports and Exercise Science, Sports Coaching, Roddy Gillis. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Science, Sports and Exercise Science, Sports Coaching, Emily Catherine Dilley. <laughs> For the award of Master of Science Sports Performance Enhancement, Jimmy Cunningham. <laughs> Jonathan Scott Fraser. <laughs> Saddam Saleh Mohammed Atwasi. <laughs> Ross James Cooper. Ruri Sean Dini. <laughs> Anthony William Denver. <laughs> Michael Gibb. <laughs> Laura Gibson. <laughs> Gregory Charles Shearer McMillan. <laughs> Erin Louise Robertson. Theodorus Zillis. <laughs> For the award of postgraduate diploma, sports performance enhancement, gymnastics coaching, Fiona Fife. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours, Veterinary Nursing, Louise Melanie Hanton. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Science, Veterinary Nursing, Lorraine Jackson. <laughs> Jackie Patricia Looney. <laughs> Fallon McMillan. <laughs> Leanne Webster. <laughs> For the award of Master of Science, Wildlife Biology and Conservation, winner of the University Medal, Winner of the Karen Fretwell Bursary Award, Annalise Bookham. <laughs> Winner of the University Medal, Jack Wilkinson. <laughs> Samara Michaela Asrat. <laughs> Suzanne Claire Dolby. Holly Louise Gaze. <laughs> Anna Therese Maria Groselier. <laughs> Penelope Louisa Jack. <laughs> Kirsty Madden. <laughs> Cameron McLean. <laughs> Kimberly O'Neill. Alex Patterson. <laughs> Beth Margaret Powell Morris. <laughs> Christopher Michael Sands. <laughs> For the award of postgraduate diploma, wildlife biology and conservation, Natalie Samul Singh. For the award of Postgraduate Certificate, Wildlife and Ecotourism, Alexander Philip Christopher Young. <laughs> it is with sympathy and respect that we honour the academic achievement of Scott Calder, who died tragically since completing his studies. He will always be part of the Edinburgh Napier family. 
and we are proud to welcome his parents here today to collect the word on his behalf. Chancellor, I now call upon the Dean of Arts and Creative Industries to present students from the School of Arts and Creative Industries. Chancellor, I am pleased to present students from the School of Arts and Creative Industries for the following awards. For the award of Bachelor of Arts Acting in English, Alessandro Ignusio. For the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours Acting for Stage and Screen, Daniel Kemi Jam. Peter Hartley Fraser. For the award of Bachelor of Arts, Communication, Advertising and Public Relations, Yuen Lam Lee. Chu Han Yu. For the award of Master of Science, Creative Advertising, Helen Miriam Balls. Karina Marielle Bonin. <laughs> Jennifer Dewar. <laughs> Roxandra Melina Dragon. <laughs> Joanne Margaret Janet Hamilton. <laughs> Winner of the University Medal, Deborah Margaret Morgan. Rebecca Tanya Alish Schmidt. <laughs> Babatunde Abifarin. <laughs> Hilar Chens Brown. <laughs> Emily Lumino. <laughs> Lydia Malero Segurado. Neve Murphy Andreas Obernaus Anastasia Pantecki Daniel William Paler Clement Lancelot Michel Raculus Aim Neha Haresh Sewani. For the award of Master of Arts Creative Writing, Alex Delaney. Winner of the University Medal, Mufanwi Elspeth Rodman. Winner of the University Medal, Rebecca Sweeney. Rebecca Gad. <laughs> Nadia Helena Cook. <laughs> Victoria Mary Frances Ridley. <laughs> Sarah Carmen Shigula. <laughs> Jamie Justin Stephen. Robert David White. For the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours English, Isabella Grachowska.
for the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours English and Film, Daisy Tatiana MacDonald. For the award of Master of Arts Environmental Graphics, Brianna Ashley Kimball. <laughs> Queening. <laughs> For the award of Master of Arts Exhibition Design, Sarah Natalia Helen Frank. <laughs> Elisabetta Rankan. For the award of Master of Arts Film, winner of the University Medal, Rhys Michael, Michael Cargan. <laughs> Matthew Efelua Akinpelu. <laughs> Meva Boche. <laughs> Kaylee Elizabeth Marie Boyd. Marco Valerio Carrara. <laughs> Mathilde Elizabeth Therese Marie de Brastafair. <laughs> Caitlin Delves. <laughs> Alexander John Dunford. <laughs> Andre Valente Franco. Asiat Gamzatova. <laughs> Sean Patrick Geddes. <laughs> Michael Stuart Gilmartin. <laughs> Sunrise Emanuela Ishimwe. <laughs> Theodoraki Kapurani. Kasper Karpovich. <laughs> Benendrand Menon Maturakotu Putenviti San Fegli. <laughs> Juan Felipe Melendez Herrera. <laughs> Freudis Fosli Mo. Anna Cristina Antunes Santos. <laughs> Ryan Thomas Sykes. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Design, Graphic Design, Fiona Hamilton. <laughs> For the award of Master of Arts, Interaction Design, Valentina Marin Echeverria. Teresa Visinga. <laughs> Jenna Marie Endres. <laughs> Marta Debra Dalelv. <laughs> Hannah Olson. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Design, Interior and Spatial Design, Emma Rice. For the award of Master of Arts International Journalism for Media Professionals, Elettra Antonietti. <laughs> Eleonora Theodoridou. <laughs> for the award of Master of Arts Journalism, winner of the University Medal, Carolyn Anona Scott. <laughs> winner of the Tristan Hewins Memorial Prize, Peter Thomas Erpeth. <laughs> Matthew David Farnham. <laughs> Silja Katarina Frolik. <laughs> Claire Caitlin Galloway. <laughs> Benjamin Michael Green. Charlotte Amy Hulme. Joel Jones Lapsley. Ashling Kathleen Press. 
Indigo Stafford. Lindsay Thompson. Philip Carl Wegman. For the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours Journalism, Ewan Hawthorne. Daniel Tully. For the award of Bachelor of Arts Journalism, John Ballantyne. For the award of Master of Arts Lighting Design, Valeria Bencardino. Ecle Prokopavicic. Chloe Martina Salvi. For the award of Master of Arts Motion Graphics, Alexandra Dimitru. Rafael Englesos. Yang Lin Chin. Lisa Lanza. Satit Poon Munsri. For the award of Bachelor of Music, Music, Emily Charlotte Harrison. For the award of Bachelor of Arts with Honours Popular Music, Gavin Richard Lamont. For the award of Bachelor of Design, Product Design, Camilla Mercy. For the award of Master of Arts, Product Design Prototyping, Anthony Chi Ho Chung. Hao Shin Wu. For the award of Master of Science Publishing, winner of the University Medal, Alice Piotrowska. Laurie Anderson. Kirsty May Andrews. Grace Martha Balfour Hupp. Balfour Hall. <laughs> Damaris Stefania Campos Arias. Mary Elizabeth Clayton. Julia Reinhilde Denk. Bethany Harriet Gibbs. Georgia Eloise Glasspole. <laughs> Stephanie Rebecca Goulden. <laughs> Elizabeth Julia Wincott Green. <laughs> Sinead Anya Herring. <laughs> Sam Robert Johnson. Aboli Harshad Kulkani. <laughs> Megan Lavery. <laughs> Andrew Paul Lindsay. <laughs> Grace Mather. <laughs> Hannah McGeekin. Platon Poulas. <laughs> Hannah Reed. Claire Imogen Withers. Joanna Julia Zukowska. For the award of Master of Arts Screenwriting, winner of the University Medal, Gavin Fulbert Jonathan Baker. Ross Jarvis. <laughs> Rosanna Scott. <laughs> Hazel Ann Allen. <laughs> Karine Chantal Christine Belmont. <laughs> Maria Viola Craig. 
Ross Simon Eccleston. Asia Goldie. Charlotte Hendricks. Celia Dahl Clading. Kyle Swan. Chancellor, I now call upon the Dean of Computing to present students from the School of Computing. Chancellor, I'm pleased to present students from the School of Computing for the following awards. We will commence with those graduating with our highest awards. The Director of Studies accompanies the student and will undertake the doctoral hooding. For the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a programme of work entitled The Role of Networking and Social Media Tools During Job Search and Information Behaviour Perspective, John Mowbray. For the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a programme of work entitled Load Balancing and Context Aware Enhancements for RPL Rooted Internet of Things, Mamoun Kasim. For the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a programme of work entitled Research Grounded Support of Student Learning in Higher Education, the Importance of Dialogue and Subject Embedded Contextualised Language and Content, Kendall Richards. For the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a programme of work entitled Reliable and Energy Efficient Scheduling Protocols for Wireless Body Area Networks, WBAN, Marwa K.S. Salema. For the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a programme of work entitled A Pattern Driven Corpus to Predictive Analytics in Mitigating SQL Injection Attack, Solomon Ogbamon Bubagbali. Chancellor, I'm pleased to present students for the following awards. For the award of Master of Science Advanced Networking, winner of the University Medal, Marwan Abeldrags Abukar. <laughs> Mahendra Laxman Bozali. <laughs> Girija Somnath Gunkar. For the award of Master of Science Advanced Security and Digital Forensics, Jonathan Andrew Eddy. Antonio Aparisi Dominic. Ryan Forbes. Pericles Maravellius. Lucas Emil Zablotoni. Tamu Nobiton, Emmanuel Adoki. <laughs> David Archibald. <laughs> Michael Ryan Banagali. <laughs> Mark Francis Fahi. <laughs> Jordan Gibran. Michael William Hogg. <laughs> Nitina Kumacharian. <laughs> Marcin Kulziki. 
Stephen Longley. Zai Paul Matsikanda. Anthony Francis Plank. Rory Gillis Shannon. For the award of Master of Science, Business Information Technology, Diego Alejandro Mendez Abdil. <laughs> Philip Gershner. <laughs> Ailish Louise McGurr. <laughs> Carl Peter Mortensen. <laughs> Adishola Adiani Albafemi. Victoria Weinsberg. <laughs> Dominic Siegel. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Engineering with Honours, Computer Security and Forensics, Macaulay Joel Costigan. <laughs> Connor Robert Purves. <laughs> Alexandru Mihu Dinu. Adam Grzboski. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Engineering, Computer Security and Forensics, Andrew James Gibson. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Engineering with Honours, Computer Security and Forensics Sandwich, Ewan Dudsmore. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Engineering with Honours, Computer Systems and Networks, Nicholas Patrick Holroyd. Usman Kaiser. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Engineering Computer Systems and Networks, David McPherson Reed. <laughs> For the award of Master of Science Computing, David Lidga. <laughs> Winner of the University Medal, Richard David Murison. <laughs> Rina Silver. Christian Benamin Balu. <laughs> Alistair Allen Lauder. <laughs> Benjamin Anthony Love. <laughs> Abigail Marissa Lowe. <laughs> Callum Scott McLean. Dianu Orfanaki. <laughs> Benjamin Nicholas Parment. <clears throat> Torrin Sloan. <laughs> Frederica Lucia Vanella. <laughs> James Wilson. For the award of Bachelor of Engineering Computing, Man Kit Kyle Cheng. <laughs> For the award of Master of Science Computing Web Development, Nicholas Anthony Bizagni. <laughs> Tony Jarvis. <laughs> Konstantinos Vertizas. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Digital Media, Stephen Fraser. <laughs> Dimitros Mapadidis. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Science Digital Media, Carrick Leyburn. <laughs> Anna Modi. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Interactive Media Design, Holly Elizabeth Glover. <laughs> For the award of Master of Science Project and Programme Management, Practice Based, Andrew Lee Gosling. <laughs> For the award of Master of Engineering Software Engineering, Gareth Robert Pullum. <laughs> Angelo Stefani. 
for the award of Bachelor of Engineering with Honours Software Engineering, Daniel Iftikhar. Stefanos Constantinou. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Sound Design, Alexander James Collier. Jordan Baker. Matthew Joseph O'Carroll. Amir Wahid Ghani. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Web Design and Development, Sam David Close. Ryan Patrick Miller. For the award of Bachelor of Science Web Design and Development, Robert William Stewart. For the award of Master of Science Web Development, Sarah Ferguson. <laughs> Chancellor, I now call upon the Dean of Engineering and Built Environment to present students from the School of Engineering and Built Environment. Thank you. Chancellor, I am pleased to present students from the School of Engineering and the Built Environment for the following awards. We will commence with those graduating with our highest awards, the Director of Studies accompanies the student and will undertake the doctoral hooding. For the award of Doctor of Philosophy, for a program of work entitled Identifying Barriers to the Implementation of Bus Policy at a local level in Great Britain using a decision support framework, Claire McTeague. For the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a program of work entitled Impact of Ubiquitous Real-Time Information on Bus Passenger Route Choice, Fargal Islam. For the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a program of work entitled Potential of Noble Fir, Norway Spruce, Western Red Cedar and Western Hemlock Grown for Timber Production in Great Britain. David Gill Moreno. Uh, Chancellor, I am pleased to present students for the following awards. For the award of Master of Science Advanced Materials Engineering, Alexander Forbes Cuthbert. <laughs> Winner of the University Medal, Rory MacDonald Edgar. <laughs> Winner of the Scottish Association for Metals Prize, Stuart Campbell Russell. <laughs> Matthew David Ferguson. <laughs> Dimitris Cardius. <laughs> Callum McLennan. Eddie James McVeigh, <laughs> Michael David Toll, <laughs> Yaising Wong, <laughs> and for the award of Master of Science Advanced Structural Engineering, Erin Margaret Hallaby. Samuel Awila Dankwa. <laughs> Max, Maxime Martin George Garcia. <laughs> Powell Leonard Gill. <laughs> Maruf Munir. <Mounier. laughs> 
for the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Architectural Technology, Kirsty Marianne Haddell. <laughs> Liam Naylor. For the award of Bachelor of Science, Architectural Technology, Megan O'Neill. <laughs> For the award of Master of Science, Architectural Technology and Building Performance, winner of the University Medal, Daniel Valquez Robel. <laughs> Carola Calguan. Rob Robert Liam Halkett. Christabel Noyerem Okokola. <laughs> For the award of Master of Science Automation and Control, Ryan James Sampson. Alexis Miguel Compres Bernard. <laughs> Yai Chun Shen. <laughs> For the award of Master of Engineering, Civil Engineering, winner of the Institute of Structural Engineering Prize, Com Jerome O'Rourke. <laughs> Rachel Margaret Lowry. Alexandra Stephanie Lissa. <laughs> Brian McDade. <laughs> For the award of Bachelors of Engineering with Honours Civil Engineering, Matthew Thomas Paul. <laughs> Rowena Emma Jane Stephen. Stuart Andrew McKinney, Jack, Jack Joseph Sadler, Ashab Zoha, for the award of Bachelors of Science with Honours in Civil Engineering, Michael Alexander Parr. Eng Feng Lai. <laughs> For the award of Master of Engineering, Civil and Transportation Engineering, Shannon Sweeney. <laughs> For the award of Bachelors of Engineering with Honours, Civil and Transportation Engineering, Cameron Richard Churn. <laughs> Blair Watt. Stephen Andrew Hunter. <laughs> For the award of Master of Science Construction Project Management, Caroline Frizz. <laughs> Christos Georgiatis. <laughs> Sean McIntyre Hunter. <laughs> Ron Joseph Kalmaraminin. Rachel Catherine McMurray. <laughs> Matthew John Owen. <laughs> Lena Dal Sembi. <laughs> Philip Sonic. <laughs> Batatude Papula Simomi. For the award of Bachelor of Engineering, Electrical Engineering, Afag Ahmed. <laughs> For the award of Master of Science, Electronic and Electrical Engineering, Assam Gaffa. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Engineering, Electronic and Electrical Engineering, Stephen MacDonald. For the award of Bachelor of Science, Electronic and Electrical Engineering, Aidan Milne-Smith. <laughs> For 
for the award of Master of Science Energy and Environmental Engineering, Maria Jusis Rendondo Rian. For the award of Bachelor of Engineering with Honours, Energy and Environmental Engineering, Mark Derry Bruton. Gordon John Patterson. For the award of Master of Science Environmental Sustainability, Augusta Imoma Amarino. Morat Atamal. Winner of the University Medal, Anna Christie. Francesco George Delgado. James Cameron Marshall. For the award of Master of Science in Facilities Management, Stamita Panchiki. <laughs> Winner of the University Medal, winner of the Scottish Builder Federation Edinburgh and District Charitable Trust Prize, Caitlin Ward Watt. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Engineering with Honours, Mechanical Engineering, Paul Irvin. <laughs> Paul Patrick O'Hear. <laughs> Frederick Amina. Angus Michelle Leslie, Adam Fraser Paramar Lynn, Niamika Chibuki Onemio, Paul Arthur Warledge, Fraser Hugh Wright. For the award of Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering, James Cameron Robert Cullen. Samuel Thomas Pagan. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours, Property Development and Valuation, Preston Luke Monson. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours, Quantity Surveying, David John Innes. For the award of Bachelor of Science Quantity Surveying, Martin Knox. For the award of Master of Science Real Estate Management and Investment, Adam Al Kateb. Stuart Robert Gorman. Rory McIntyre. Cameron O'Mara. For the award of Master of Science Renewable Energy, Masood Babija Adoye. <laughs> Elizabeth Kardizodi. <laughs> Deepak Saravanan. <laughs> Anton Shagin. <laughs> Mohammed Zain. Zaifa Zhao. <laughs> For the award of Master of Science, Safety and Environmental Management, Zhu Meng Chen. <laughs> Edith Nolasco Benitez. <laughs> Stephanie Uzama Nuka Akar. <laughs> For the award of Master of Science, Transport Planning and Engineering, Sean Kerr Boyd. <laughs> Winner of the University Medal, Alice Chama Chipasula. <laughs> Abdullah Moyer Abdullah Hussain. <laughs> Daniel Perkis. 
Gabrielle Rivelli. For the award of Bachelor of Engineering with Honours, Mechanical Engineering, Aidan Volokmed Shureka. Sorry. Okay, this is, this is not my faculty. For the award of Master of Science Applied Criminology and Forensic Psychology, Dovil Jazaventuti. Uh, Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of students from the School of Engineering and the Built Environment. Thank you. Can I ask the graduates to stand, please? By the powers vested in me by the University Court and the Academic Board of Edinburgh Napier University, I confer the awards for which you have been presented today. For those eligible for an award but unable to attend today's ceremony, I am pleased to confer the awards in absentia. Many congratulations to you all. Please be seated. We're now going to have a short musical interlude presented by students from the university. Please enjoy.
Well, good afternoon. I would like to add my welcome to that of David, our Chancellor, and John, the President of our Student Association. Uh, it's wonderful to see so many people here in the Usher Hall today. And I'd particularly like to thank Kenneth and our students for that wonderful performance of a piece composed specifically for today, using the words of Wilfred Owen's poem, Song of Songs. He was, of course, one of the famous war poets who, along with Siegfried Sassoon, spent time in recovery at Craig Lockhart when it was a war hospital. With the centenary of the armistice that ended the First World War just days away, I'm very pleased we are marking it in this manner here today. It's also special to hear it sung on our graduation days, which are the highlights of the year of the Edinburgh Napier academic calendar for each ceremony is particularly special. We have all come today, today together here as one community in the hall, but I recognize that each of your roots here today will have been unique. The challenges, the triumphs, the setbacks, and the successes are all part of your individual stories. Whatever your journey here today, my very warmest congratulations to each of you. And I want to add my thanks and appreciation to two groups of people. First, your families and friends. As a parent who this year watched my daughter graduate, I hold dear the memories of that day, an occasion of joy and pride, and one to be treasured and to be shared. I know that the support of your friends and families will have been of immeasurable value to you during your time here, and so my warm thanks to them. And second, I want to also thank my colleagues, the staff of the university, many of whom are here in the hall today. Like me, they take great satisfaction and pride in your success. So what does it mean to be an Edinburgh Napier graduate in 2018? It's perhaps a bit of a cliche to say we are living in times of great uncertainty. Global political uncertainty, shifting centers of power, challenges to the status quo and many aspects of our ways of living. And trying to see, understand the implications, to see through the turbulence to the truth is a challenge to us all. Advances in technology have exponentially increased the amount of information we have now access to and these same advances have also increased exponentially opportunities for communication, but also for confusion and for conflict. Frequently, we hear about fake news, the dark web, identity theft. But I believe that these are just words from our age for preoccupations of every age and generation. For as long as there has been information there has been disinformation. Every fact creates the possibility of its denial or an alternative fact, and any idea can be misconstrued. But in this environment, take a moment to reflect on how you have achieved your degree. In learning, you've not just acquired knowledge, but a mindset which has been developed, not taught, and that has prepared you well for the future. You have learned to test evidence, authenticate facts, apply logic, and see the spectrum of possibilities when forming your views, and most importantly, when shaping your actions. That is both your talent and your responsibility as graduates of this university. Take a moment also to reflect on the opportunities which lie ahead opportunities which may not be apparent today. Just a few years ago, few would have thought we would have reached the point today where we can realistically foresee the demise of petrol and diesel due to the advances in design and demand for electric vehicles, or that artificial intelligence would have become part of our daily lives, and we would be on the cusp of a revolution which, among other possibilities, is likely to transform the way we learn in the future. With open minds and the ability to think critically, 
I know you will inform and shape our society and our politics and shape them for the good. Why? Because I've seen these attributes in your achievements of the awards that we are celebrating here today. I think of the graduates here who are already having a positive effect in society, working on placements with local organisations to bring, out, bring about better outcomes for those in care and for ex-offenders. I think of our creator minds who once again swept the board at a number of prestigious UK design awards in 2018. I think of those who have somehow balanced international sporting careers with studies in subjects as diverse as engineering and business. Those of you from overseas who have joined our PhD community and advanced research in areas such as wireless devices while simultaneously advancing the role of women in computing. And I also applaud and am wowed by our many students graduating today who have studied while working and often with family and caring responsibilities. That is a real demonstration of commitment, motivation and drive. And so my challenge to you today is this, to use all that you have gained throughout your university journey to make a difference to the communities in which you will live and work. You cannot control or predict the future, but you can control the attitudes you bring. Be courageous and perceptive. Be thoughtful and respectful. Have confidence in your abilities and be open to opportunities. A university is a dynamic learning community and learning is a shared endeavor. So as you, our graduates, have benefited from your time with us, be in no doubt that you have also made this university a better place. For you came here with your own unique qualities, perspectives and ways of working, and so we have learned from you. And many of you have come from around the world to study, and the talent and diversity of perspectives and experiences that you have brought have enriched us all. As we look to the future, we will maintain an unwavering commitment to learning in an environment where ideas thrive and new knowledge and advances are made. I see this every day in the research that our staff lead, whether it be in developing innovative blockchain technology to prevent online fraud, leading the way in design and construction of affordable homes, harnessing our design expertise to improve the quality of life for patients with long-term conditions, or making huge steps towards curing the common cold. So we in Edinburgh Napier will continue to play our part in Scotland and with communities around the world, reaching across borders to tackle the major challenges of our time. I know I speak for all the staff when I say that we are very proud to have you as our graduates. I hope you've enjoyed your time with us. You have made friendships that will last a lifetime. And I hope that you feel a strong connection with Edinburgh Napier University and with the city of Edinburgh. Take pride in our achievements and speak of others with your time with us. But above all, be part of our future by staying connected to us as valued alumni. So graduates of 2018, my very warm congratulations to each and every one of you. I wish you all the very best for the future. Thank you. This is a part of the ceremony where I'm meant to offer some words of hope and wisdom. Well, I'm unsure how wise will be. That's for up to you to take from it. But they are full of hope and they are offered with genuine sincerity. Especially today when again we're reminded how fragile and how precious our time is. If someone ever tells you your dreams are impossible, wish them well and tell them perhaps theirs are, but not yours. For the reality of it is none of us knows what tomorrow holds. What I can tell you for sure, however, you will never achieve your dreams if you do not try. 
dreams are important, but no more so than the journey in search of them. In terms of physical miles, I grew up not too far from here. In terms of me ever thinking one day I would be privileged to stand on this stage before you, well, that was another world away and a dream I could never have imagined. We never cease to learn so long as our hearts and minds are open and often our classrooms of tomorrow have no walls. I like to tell the story someone unknown taught me. Some years ago as I was walking down 10th Avenue in New York, I noticed a little piece of, a bit of graffiti on a wall. I can't credit the author's name today for the chose to remain anonymous, but I hope I offer this with their blessing. I've added the word dreams alongside the word success. And this is what many people hope for, an effortless instant fast track. But this is the reality. It made me smile, but it also made me think. If the scribble on the left was your reality, I think it would disappoint most of you. Not immediately, but eventually. Even though that's hard to believe, let me tell you why. The little bundle of chaos on the right, the confusing bit, well, that's actually where the magic happens. That's the part of the journey in front of you that you can't imagine today. But funnily, it's the most important part of the journey. It looks confusing and chaotic, and often it is. But don't fear it and never underestimate its value. For it houses a special part of the journey that lies before you. It's important because it's where you will find your wildest dreams. The ones, as I say today, you can't even begin to imagine. But take my word, they're even better than the ones you can. Try to remember this when all seems lost, and from time to time it will. But never stop trying, for it will unravel itself one day of that I am absolutely sure. I'm also sure you now want to go congratulate one another, a few smiles, a couple of selfies and a couple of drinks, and for me to keep this speech as short as possible. But please take one extra little moment today and think of all the people in this world and the dreams so many of them have and can only ever imagine. For many millions, their dreams would be to sit in the very seats you are sitting in today and dream of an education. Enjoy and cherish this precious moment. Today is about you, but tomorrow even more so. For this is the start of what is relatively a short journey, so don't waste your time worrying or being fearful of failure. Only fear not trying. Failure can often be the greatest contributor to a person's success and never stop dreaming. And I hope one day, like me, you'll experience your wildest dreams. For I stand here humbled and proud before each and every single one of you as testament to their existence. Share your moments and encourage others to dream. Who knows, they may even become part of your dreams. My hopes are not for you to change the world. The world will take care of itself. My hopes are that you will support it, enrich it, and respect it. Experience will feed you like little else you encounter in life. Share your experiences and wisdom with others and enjoy this special day. And to each and every single one of you, congratulations and well done. I now declare our graduation ceremony closed and would ask you to be upstanding for the academic procession. Thank you.